Okay, we're recording. Okay. Can you see? I can. Okay, okay um, let's see, can you maximize your screen? Does it, does it let you do that? Because it's looking pretty narrow. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, first, first, Kenna, I want you to click on that backwards P, the paragraph marker. Let's turn that setting on. Oops, let me move some things around. Okay, right here. Yes. And can you zoom out so that we can see one whole page at a time? Yes. Great. Okay. Um, all right. So let's just scroll down. Where are you first seeing your page numbers going wrong or are they just wrong everywhere? So I did this um, section break uh -huh. in all of my preliminary pages okay. so that the page numbers, um, so I could start the page numbers at my introduction. Okay. And when I get no. to my introduction, I um, also did a, um, let's see, when I do, I guess it doesn't show it here, but I, I took off the link to the previous page so that the page numbers are not attaching to all of those preliminary pages. Okay. And then I entered the page number um, uh, and started it at one. Okay. So I have this page number one right here on my first page of my introduction and it doesn't continue on page two or any of the subsequent pages. Okay. So first off, let's scroll up into your preliminary pages because you do need page numbers if you've got any second pages going on and you do have second pages. Yes. So let's, um, and also I'm wondering if you want to hang on a little bit after we're done with Evan, because I'm seeing formatting issues within your manuscript that will cause it to be rejected. Okay. So, and I can go through those with you after we've let Evan go. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So what I want you to do is I want you to scroll down to uh, the first page. Um, I want you to scroll down to the abstract. Okay. And are you using the function that the table of contents is a, an updatable field that will update itself? No. Okay. Well, then we don't need to worry about the page of the abstract. So then scroll down to the first page of the table of contents. Okay. And I want you to um, click into the footer. Oh, it is. Okay. So put your cursor in the footer of that. So if you'll notice up above um, on your ribbon, you have the check mark different first page checked, which is correct. You want that setting going on. Okay. So now I want you to scroll to the footer of the second page. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. You have, aha. Okay, scroll, um, click out of your footer. Okay into the main body because you have a section break that is messing you up. So you write C right after the number 27 on evaluating academic language in writing um, and the number 27. And yes. you see how instead of a paragraph, you've got those two dots. That tells me yes. there's a section break. So I want you to delete that section break. Okay. Can I just delete it or do I have to do it in the, I, I believe it's an insert function, am I right? No, go ahead and just delete it. Okay. So you don't have to, you got to delete it going the other way. So yeah, put your cursor at purpose and, and select up. Uh, so on a Mac, okay. it's only a delete, not a backspace function, unless there's a keystroke trick that I'm not aware of. So put your, put your cursor next to, next to the P on purpose of the study. Yes and hold it and like kind of select up to see if you can get that section break selected. You have to select it from the bottom. Um, and then there. there we go. 
Okay, now, de now delete. Perfect, okay. now hit enter. Um, and um, now you just need to delete some of those dots so that the 29 yeah. shows up. Okay, perfect, yay. Uh, so now click into the, um, well, let's scroll down and see if you've got another section break at the bottom of this page and you do not. Okay, so click into the footer on the second page of this table of contents. Okay, so um, yes, you're not linked to previous. You've got different first page. Okay, so what we want to do is I want you to go up to the top left of the screen where it says page number and click the little down arrow. Up here? Yes, just yep. slide okay, over there. It. Click the down arrow. And then page number again. Is it showing me? Well, click it because it should open up a little menu. There you go. Okay, so now format. Click on format just down there at the bottom. There you go. Now you have one page in your abstract. Do you have anything between, I could, I can't remember, do you have anything between the end of your abstract and the table of contents? I do not. Okay, so this will be, we're, we're starting at four because your table, your abstract is page three. And then go up and change the number format to Roman numerals. There, and hit okay. Now, oh, does this, although there's, there is the uh, statement of dissertation approval, does that count as, as paginated? Yes, but it's page number two and we don't, it's not listed in the table of contents, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, the one thing that we're going to have to go back and do later, and we'll, we'll talk about that ourselves, is you're going to have to re-add a section break in front of abstract, but that doesn't okay. matter. Okay. So, and then okay why did it pop you up there Hit close and I want you to scroll back down to the first page of the table of contents okay wait go back up all right you're missing a section break there so click out of the footer and we're going to add a section break and it's a next page section break okay. so go to layout and you see where the brakes close the put click the little down arrow and open up that menu that it should open up. And is it next page? Yes, it's next page. Okay. We don't ever want to use continuous if we can avoid it. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna click into the footer and the of this page. Of the first page of the table of contents? Yeah, we're just going to check the formatting of the page numbers again. All right, so since we've added that break, it has now relinked it to the previous section. So you're going to need to unlink the header and the footer of this first page and the header and the footer of the second page. And the reason why we have to do this on the second page is because we've set it as a different first page. So the settings are different from the first page to the second page. Okay, so now we're gonna check the format of the page numbers again. So go back over to that page number menu. And we wanna open that dialog box back up and click format. And we are starting at four. Yep, that's all right the way it should be. Okay, so okay. hit okay. It's gonna pop you back up. I want you to close. And it's going to pop you because anytime you change settings of page numbers, it will pop you back up to the first page of the set of the section. Okay. So in order to insert the, uh, the page number. So um, I want you to delete that page number that it just added because this we don't, one here. Yep. Delete it. So I want you to click into the footer of the second page of the section. Um, so that one, yes, and I want you to go back up to page number. Hi, good morning. Um, and when it opens the dialog box, I want you to put it, not a alignment, no, click alignment, and we need it in the center. 
there and hit OK. Okay. Okay, so now the number is correct because the second page of the table of contents is page five. Now let's scroll down to the third page of the table of contents and it should say page six. Yes. There we go. So now um, you are probably, looks like you're missing a section break at the bottom of the table of contents. So there will, it will probably say page six in the bottom of the list of tables. Yes. It, or page, yeah, page seven. So click out of the body and I want you to add a next page section break. If you have, if you generally, if you have page numbers showing up or not showing up where they're supposed to, it's because a page break is missing. Okay. Or it's the oh. wrong kind of page break. Next page. There you go. Okay. So now list of tables, the page number has now disappeared. Great. Um, so replace that page break between the list of tables and the list of figures with that next page section break. Okay. Yeah. Were there any yeah. next page? Okay. Great. So if you scroll down to list of figures, it will not have a page break on it now. Okay. Great. So now we're going to get your page numbers in the right spot on the first page of chapter one. So click into the header of chapter one. And it's been just you you it, it has remained it's not linkedness. So I want to I want to check the footer of the first page of section one of this chapter and the header of yes. So unlink this footer. Uh, unlink the footer. Like the, right. The theme. And unlink the the there yes unlink that he header oh okay and unlink the footer of that page too okay oops um yeah unlink okay there we go so now delete that page number it added that page number two because it was connected to the previous section that we were adding page numbers at the bottom of the page okay okay so now you're going to go to the top of this page um uh, unlink it. it it linked itself again okay. okay so we're finally there so click <laughs> up on that cursor that's closer to the top of the page okay and delete that box that's sitting there okay perfect so now we're going to go back to the foot num the the page number um section and in, I want you to, yes, just hit OK. OK. Perfect. So now scroll up to the first page, and there will not be, uh, delete that page number. We don't want a one on the introduction? OK. No, any page that has a main heading, there is no page number to show up. OK. Um, and you do have a main heading here, and we're going to fix it, because it's okay. wrong. OK. Um, but we'll fix it when Evan is not when okay. I'm not recording this stuff. So, all right, so now we scroll through. You should have the correct page numbers on the pages. Let's go to chapter two. Okay. Yeah, are you trying to submit today? Yes. Okay, we got a lot of work ahead of you. Okay. To make sure you don't get rejected. Um, Okay, so you'll notice that the page number 31 shows up there uh -huh. and it shouldn't because that's a main heading. So scroll up and you've got a page break instead of a section break on the page before. Okay, so replace that page break with a section break. I don't know if um, section break. Yeah, next page section break. Is that Oh, next page. There it is. Okay. Got it. Perfect. And now you'll notice that your page number disappeared. Yes. Um, okay. So it's, it, the counting has started over again. So we need to go back in and go back in and format the page numbers for this section. Okay. So click in the header of either that page or the page before. Um, and I want you to go back to where we said format. So that's in that menu. Look. Say that again. So go back into the menu for page numbers so that we can oh, click okay. that format Got button. It. Page number. And hit format. Format. <laughs> and I want you to continue from previous section. Continues. Okay, gotcha. So there you go. Hit okay. All right. 
and hit OK again. Ah, uh, no, ah, we were wrong. Um, delete that page number. OK. And go to the first page of page two. There you go. So okay. that is how you, so you'll do that for each chapter. If the pagination okay. is, um, if you've got a page number on the first page of the chapter, replace the page break on the page before with the next page section break. And okay. if the numbers start over, you need to go and reformat so that it continues from the previous section. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that should fix the, those steps should fix your page numbers for the rest of the manuscript. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so Evan, let's look at your manuscript. I'm gonna stop sharing here. Okay. Now, Kenna, there's one thing that can you, you see can, that? there's, yes. Now, Kenna, there's something that you can be working on while we're, while I'm talking to Evan, if you want to just um, be doing that. And that is that every single one of those um, freestanding subheads, the subheads that are on their own line, they need a heading space above them. So you need to put your cursor at the end of the paragraph before and hit enter to place a blank double spaced line above that freestanding subheading. Does that make sense? Okay, so for every freestanding subheading, I put the cursor on the paragraph before and hit enter. Yes. And that's that there's no formatting. Uh, no, if if your if it, if your paragraph is set up to not add any extra space, so it's just a regular sized bl blank double line, then that will create the correct size heading space that you need ahead of all of those subheads. Okay, so and this is throughout the manuscript, not just on the table of contents. And uh, yeah, no, don't touch your table of contents right now. Okay. We'll talk about it later. But that is a kind of a, a time-consuming task that you could be working on while I'm helping Evan. Okay, um, great. The only exception is if you've got two, two freestanding subheads coming immediately after each other with no text between them, you only uh -huh. need the one, sub, the one heading space above the first one. One sub, okay. Okay? Yes. All right, Evan, um, can you scroll out so that I can see the whole page? Zoom out or just? Yeah, just keep, keep zooming out till oh. I can see an entire page. Keep zooming. It's okay if I can see two pages at a time. There we go. Okay. Um, now let's start. Like there should be a section for a page. Let us start at. Let's look at your preliminary pages first and make sure you've got those done correctly. Sure. Okay, so yeah, I wanna see the second page of the abstract. Yes, that's correct. Table of contents, four, five, six, seven. So the second page of the table of contents, oh, okay, no, that's, that's a problem. All right, so scroll up to the first page of your abstract. I want them to see you like moving forward. Like imagery in my mind. Okay, so click your cursor on that, on your dedication page, put your cursor there because I can't see what kind of break that is since it starts immediately after the text. I don't, you don't need to be in the header or the footer yet. Um, so go to, it's, you know, the, after the second page of your abstract, you have your dedication. Sure. Uh, right there. So after Lee, click your cursor after Lee. Yeah. Okay, and hit enter so I can see what kind of break that is. Uh, hit enter again. Okay, so that's the correct section break. Okay, so go to the first page of your table of contents. Um, well, 
and I want you to click into the header and footer of your table of contents. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, that's, let's see, four, five, six, seven. All right, that, that all looks the same. I don't know what it was I was seeing before. Okay, so now let's go down to the next section. Seven, eight. Um, okay, so I want you to delete all of those blank lines ahead of that first page. What is so I need to s okay acknowledgments. No, it's it's after your list of yes. So do you see how your list of fi figures? I think those are figures ends. But you have what yeah. you have is going on, a blank page going on. So you need to delete all of those blank lines so that we can get the section breaks at the bottom of your list of unless you're planning on adding more figures. Potentially, well, because it's right on the edge, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a good chance more figures will get added. Okay, well then we'll just ignore that because you're going to be putting more figures there. All right, so just scroll down now to. Uh -huh. Um, the next section, acknowledgement, so nine, okay, keep scrolling, 10, 11, okay, keep going. Twelve, okay, so let me see the top of the first page of chapter one. Oh, yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, click into the, the header of that. Okay, so um, let me see the footer of the first page of chapter one. Okay, so what I want you to do is click in that footer and we need to unlink it. So click in the footer of the first page of chapter one. Okay, and oh, you lost your ribbon. Yeah, unlink. It doesn't let me do that. Do, um, okay, can you get your ribbon back? There we go. There, okay. So, um, click over to, do you see how up at the top of the, above the ribbon, you can see that it, the, it's opened up a new tab called header and footer? Yeah. Click that. And I want you to unlink to previous. So you've got the box link to previous is grayed out. Click that. Perfect. Now scroll down to page two of this section. And that is not linked. Scroll down to the footer of this page. That is not linked. Okay, great. Now you'll see that your page numbers are the correct number now. Um, I want you just to go ahead and let's just check, go up to page one. There, and oh, it's still, yeah, delete 53. And click into the, I want you to click into the number, um, the number format thing. So if you go back up to header and footer and open up that ribbon, 
And go over to page number on the left side and click the little down arrow. And format page numbers. And start at one. And change it to Arabic numerals up above. And hit OK. I know because I don't know why it was showing. Whoa. Why is it doing that? Because it just changed it to two. Scroll down to the footer of page one. Footer section eight. Section nine. All right, I want you to go ahead and let's see if this solves the problem. I want you to click into the header and the footer of that um, acknowledgement section, and we want to unlink those. So, right there on the first, the, the page, yeah. So click in there and unlink. Make sure your cursor is in the correct header or footer. So put your cursor in the header above the acknowledgments. Yes, now we're going to unlink that. and unlink the footer. Okay, so it's not linked. All right, none of those are linked. Now let's go back and look at, um, delete that page number two. And we're going to go back into the footer. We need to reformat those page numbers. Um, so go back into the header and footer menu um, on the page two of your acknowledgments. Yeah. And I want you to go over to the page number and drop that little, let's pull up the page number menu again. Or, wait, is it? You can find it, like you, if you click That's the down it. arrow there, yeah. it might open up that same menu. Okay, is this not, is it format page numbers is what you're looking for? Or format, is yeah, format page numbers. And I want you to click continue from previous section and change it to Roman numerals. So you're talking about tentative plans bottom or even further? And hit OK. And now we need to re-add the number. So keep your cursor on the footer of, put your cursor back on the footer of page two of the acknowledgments. And add the page number. And you're going to go, yeah, bottom of the page center. Uh, does it matter which one? Um, plain number two. Okay. okay. So I want you to delete that extra space that it just added underneath that page number this one yep 
I'm just trying to figure out how to capture people in communities. Okay. So I want to recount because I think the numbers are off now. So wait. Let's just scroll up so that I can see that page oh, no. number. And let's make sure that the page numbers are still correctly pageant, like are counting correctly. Right. Okay, so 9, 10, 11. Perfect. Okay, so now go to the first page of your first chapter. And they're only displaying on every other page. They are not, you do not want page numbers on any page that has a main heading. So all of those all cap headings, no page number on those pages. Chapter one. Also, okay. Here. Okay, so those are correct. So, and the second page shows page two. So we're we're counting correctly. I just want to see those footers. Make sure we don't have page numbers in those footers. Okay. Those all look good. So now take me to the first page of your next chapter. And let's make sure everything's going right there. Oh, uh, wait. Did you just, did you skip a whole bunch of pages or is it counting incorrectly? Oh, you did. Okay, sorry. I'm uh, not paying attention. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so page 52. Do you see how there's a page number on page 53 with those main headings of for chapter two? We do not want that page number 53 yeah. showing up. And the reason it's showing up is because on page 52, instead of a section break, you have a page break. So click out of the header page and footer, break. and we're going to replace that page break with a section break. Is it's under layout. Oh, that's right. And you want a next page section break. Okay, so now delete that. I should probably also delete that. Yeah. So you'll notice now that there is no page number on chapter two. And let's scroll down and make sure it's it's counting correctly. So the first number we next see should be okay. So what's going on now is we should have seen page fifty three starting on that section. So scroll up to the first page of chapter two. And you'll notice that there is a section break next next page. We need to replace that section break with a page break. And when you do that, a page number should show up on the next page. Um, layout. Wait, I just did it backwards. <laughs> Hold on. Uh. Is your is your cursor on that page break or on that where that break is? Ah, great. And so now you see that 52, 53 is not showing up because there's main heading there and page 54 is showing up right where it's supposed to. So everything is correct there. And the only thing you had to do to fix it was reverse, was make sure that there was a section break on the page before the chapter started and that there was no section break within the chapter. So now scroll down to... So then when I end up doing this later, it should be section break after... Oh, uh, where the three will have the same. Yeah, but you'll notice here that before you go into your figures, you've got a section break um, right in the middle of chapter three. And you'll notice that your page numbers are misbehaving. Okay. 
there. Whoop. I just lost it. There. No, go. It's it should be in front of you. You would put it in front of your figures. There. Yes. Replace that with a with a page break. Great, and you'll see that page number 96 showed up where it was supposed to. So if you go to the end of this chapter and make sure you've got a section break at the bottom of your references, and you do not, so make sure you put a section break at the bottom of those references. Great, and then delete the section break and replace it with a page break after that first page of section four. Oop, I'm doing that. There we go. And then I probably also won't need that section. Wait, 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 because I think you just go ahead and start chapter five since you haven't written it yet, right? Like you've got that blank page and then that would be the first page of chapter five? Uh, I don't think I will have a chapter five. Okay, just scroll down and let me see page 106. Okay. This is uh Are those the are like those the book. references for chapter 4? Uh no. Those are this is an internal thing from OneNote or from uh EndNote that is going to be deleted. Okay. Uh, so yeah. It automatically right. puts it at the bottom but Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, so when you write chapter 4, you'll make sure that you write it above that section break that we just added for the bottom of chapter four yeah. and then if you add any other chapters you'll just make sure that there's a section break at the end of the chapter and within the chapters it, it is only page breaks if you need a break and at that point yeah. all of your settings for your page numbers should remain consistent so they should behave when the correct breaks are in place great yeah that makes a lot more sense I feel like I was looking too much at the settings within the page number format, uh -huh. not looking at the page breaks, which are it's referring to. So that's, yeah, that's and this blanks. this is a really really common problem with students when their page numbers are not working. So I'm glad I was able to work through that with you on video, um, because it's kind of hard yeah. to explain through text, like all of the different steps and the various settings that can be wrong. Because um, page numbers are really complicated, as you can see, because you can have like different pagination in different spots for every single section of your chap of your manuscript if you want to. Um, and we don't want we we only I also uh, on all the tutorials I saw they never mentioned the the link. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, because that'll. So that, that was all. Yeah, that'll really mess you up. But um, wait, scroll up. Why is there a page number on? The first page of chapter four. Let me see what yeah. what break is as above that. Section break. It's got a section break. Okay, so click into the header of chapter four. That first page of that. Click into that. Okay, let me see what what settings are for that that header. because there should not be a page number there. Aha, so put a check mark next to different first page. And then 
click out and you'll see that your page number disappeared and a page number showed up on the next page where it's supposed to be. So that's also a setting that can get wrong is if you don't have it set to have a different first page. Okay, so your page number problems should be fixed and hopefully if they start misbehaving again, you um, know like the various things that could be wrong to go try to fix it. Definitely, um, if you have the link to this recorded video, I can always refer back to it too, so I'm not. Right, I will. I think I can remember. Yeah, I'll put it in there. I'll, I'll make it available for, for students. And um, also, the other thing I just want to say is that if your page numbers are misbehaving and you are struggling to fix them, do not let page numbers misbehaving stop you from turning your manuscript in because we don't care on the first draft if the page numbers are fine. They don't, the things we reject manuscripts for are stuff that will move your text around on the page and page numbers don't affect the text on the page. So um, I hear students a lot and I'm just, I'm saying this so that students watching this video later can see this. I hear of students spending hours and hours and hours on trying to fix their page numbers and having that delay them turning their manuscript in. And it's just sad because that should not, that's not a valid reason to delay. I want you to get a better spot in line and then be able to work on the page numbers during the weeks it's waiting for us to get to it. Okay. All right. Good. Um, I'm going to stop recording now if, and you can stop sharing your screen and thank you so much for allowing future students to be able to watch this video. Um, and Evan, you can